Arsenal have found and identified the midfielder they're looking for. They have found their midfield target. According to reports, Mikel Arteta wants to sign his fellow Spaniard and namesake Mikel Moreno, no matter what this summer, and allegedly has already called the player to convey the big plans he has for him. And allegedly, Moreno is seduced by a potential move. Sociedad allegedly feel all roads lead towards a transfer for around 25 million euros. According to reports, as we know, it's silly season. The transfer rumour mills are going to be swirling. There's a lot of creative journalism that's going to be done and you know a case of getting two and two and getting five and just altering the truth and what's actually happening in the world of football as the journalists look to get clicks essentially but nonetheless again according to reports in Spain Arteta has personally called and telephoned his namesake and expressed a desire in obtaining his services and taking a direct approach via reaching out explaining to the midfielder the plans he has both for him individually and collectively now when you look at the Athletic, I mean, the Athletic themselves have said central midfield is a ma major focus for Arsenal in this upcoming transfer window. We've been credited with names like Jao Neves, Martin Zubamendi, Onana, the list goes on. Um, and we've been linked with equally a number of number eights in midfield and a number of number sixes, people. And it remains to be seen just who we identify, what specific midfield role they occupy and what that means for both Mikel Arteta on a tactical point of view. But I'd also say for Martin Odegaard, and Declan Rice. Now, where Moreno is concerned, I do think many English fans will look at him and say, hey, you know what? It's not really the blockbuster signing to make Arsenal better. And B, people might look back to his time at Newcastle. Now, he's 28, 29 years of age. Now, he made that move to Newcastle at 21 years of age. And it's your good and bad experiences in life that make you who you are. For what it's worth, for me personally, I think he's dynamic, he's intelligent, he's committed, he's brave, he provides experience as well. Um, in the middle of the park in a young-ish sort of side, I would describe him as all action. When you look at his statistics regarding progressive passes, take-ons, tackles, blocks and interceptions, I could see why not only Arsenal but all the clubs linked with him would be keen to sign him and introduce him to their squad people. It's the aerial draws or his ability to win aerial draws is what stands out for me as well, people. His record is phenomenal in that regard. Now, when you look at aerial draws, I think he won 342 across the last season. And that is suited to what Mikel Arteta is doing and adding height in the team, but also in the Premier League in, in its end-to-end -end nature. No La Liga midfielder made more tackles than him across the course of last season. In fact, no midfielder in Europe's top five leagues made 300-plus draw um, wins in succession, people, than him across the last season. So if you've won the most draws for possession in Europe's top five leagues, you know, standing at 300-odd, this would be someone that's all action and maybe not someone that's going to raise the ceiling, but could raise the floor and bring some great skills and qualities into Arsenal. He wins aerial jewels, he wins ground jewels, he's got a great act engine, he's got good positioning, he's got fairly decent ball retention skills. I feel while it wouldn't be a blockbuster name, it would be a smart addition to the squad people. I wouldn't say he's amazing in the final third in an attacking sense, but he understands that you have to contribute in some capacity into our progressive play or into his team's progressive play into the opponent's half and you need to, in the modern day, be an all-action midfielder of some sorts people. Um, you know, if you look at... Um, this graphic taken from the Athletic looking at Sociedad, where he's also been linked with his fellow Spanish and Real Sociedad teammate Martin Zubamendi. But just focus on the particular areas that Zubamendi finds Moreno in. It seems like Moreno is the more dynamic sort of player in terms of getting up and down the field out of that duo, people. And on the topic of Zubamendi, who's been linked with Arsenal, obviously, if we've been linked with Zubamendi and we've had Kieran Tini over at Sociedad on loan, Obviously, we would have sent scouts or the appropriate people to watch both of them players, but we must have been alerted to Moreno or any other player in Sociedad's team or who they've come across, people. We must have ran the rule over him and must have a decision to make in that regards, people. Could he be the man to allow Declan Rice to remain in this kind of new look eight role? I'm not too sure, but you would imagine that would be the case if, for argument's sake, and humouring you lot in this video, if that was the case. One thing I like about him is something I kind of alluded to earlier. Now, he's 
28 years of age. He has a sense of urgency. I think everybody young and old at Arsenal has that, but he's 28. Now, that isn't old. I know in football, people want to run to the hilltops and get scared when you sign a 28-year-old. You know, his game, obviously, in the modern day, he is in midfield. You do need to be physically athletic, but his game is more reliant on his intelligence, his speed of thought. It's not like he relies on his pace, so he can adapt his game per se within that regards, if I'm honest. But him being 28, it not working out at Newcastle, this could he could have a sense of urgency, a sense of it's now or never to have a proper taste of being in a team that's competing or aspiring to compete for honest people and the ability to try and win things. When you go back to his current employer, Sociedad, once again, people, there's a lot of transferables. You know, one would be Sociedad play a high pressing system. It's very different to Arsenal's, but in the modern day, who does it really? So there's a lot of transferables that would allow him to hit the ground running at Arsenal and ultimately thrive. And in that sense, he would seamlessly fit into me. Mikel Arteta's team dynamics in that regards. Now, when you look at potential cons, if there could be any, I would say some fans, you know, unfortunately in football, some fans might look at him and say, you know what, fair enough, you're playing for Sociedad, you've played in the Champions League, you're being linked with Barcelona, Atletico, Arsenal, Manchester United and Manchester City, Juventus across the last season that's gone. But your name doesn't really stand out. It shouldn't be like that, but many people will say such people. As I said, I don't necessarily think he's a game-changing midfield up, but I'm open to bringing him in the squad. I think he's confident in the role he, he, he undertakes. I think he's competent in the role he does and mainly consistent in his role. And I think his experience is good and bad. Could You know, it would be a level-headed man to bring to this club and he would have a point to prove returning to England, if I'm honest with you. I would also say, is there a basis to any of these rumours or is it a case of simply put the tabloids having a bit of creative journalism because we need a midfielder obviously we've been linked with several others you know Onana, Zuba, Mendy one minute we're signing them then we're not is it a case of again as I said earlier getting two plus two and getting a million I'm not sure you know if we do go go for this individual of course on one hand it could be seen as a very you know shrewd addition I don't really care how much we sign players for as long as they bring something but could you argue that we don't believe the targets that we've previously been linked with provide value for money. Could they be unattainable? Could this be like not even a plan B? Could this be plan Z? When you look at reports, people, some reports say 25 million, some go all the way up to say 50 million euros, which I believe is the release clause in his contract. And apparently, you know, Arsenal, based on reports, are reportedly willing to meet Sociedad with that figure. And he's still linked with Barcelona. Now, you know, Arsenal might be increasingly confident about securing his services. They might genuinely want to sign him. But one would argue if he's a 28-year-old with a year essentially left on his deal, are Arsenal going to spend 50-odd million euros on him when in January of, of next year you can agree a move next year for free? A bit like what we're going to face with Thomas Partey potentially. That's what makes me doubt that if I'm honest, people. It has also been speculated that Sociedad are concerned about losing Moreno on a free transfer when his contract expires. So naturally, they either want him to A, sign it, deal or B, be moved on. But is this where the rumours are coming from rather than tangible proof that Arsenal are interested in his services? I'm not too sure, people, in that regards. Just by typing his name on Google, you can see him linked with several clubs, as I said. Um, for what it is, though, I think he, you know, the man has played coy on his future, as you can see in the screenshot, and not alluded to anything as he's focusing on the Euros with Spain. I would say, in short, for me, I don't think he's a signing that would move the needle. And I don't mean that as a criticism, but it does do its bit once again to raise the floor of this team and have a competent squad. And I do think he's intelligent, he's dynamic, he's kind of multifunctional. I would not say he's an eight. I don't think he's anything to screen and shout about in the final third but he's competent in all phases of the game if I'm completely honest with you you know if there was one thing and again I'm, I'm probably reaching again but in in you know trying to make sure I, I cover all bases, injuries would be something. You know, the last couple of seasons, he's consistently picked up a few knocks. Now, in the grand scheme of things, he's not missed many games. But as Arsenal fans, we are quite scared of such. For me personally, in short, I think regarding his technical skills, I think he's got excellent passing accuracy, vision and ball control. I think his tactical intelligence is great because he's got a great and a strong understanding of the game and it allows him to read, play effectively and make some vital interceptions. I think he's versatile. Why he's 
probably at home in a more defensive, dirty work kind of remit in midfield. He does provide tactical flexibility in that he can contribute in the final third. Again, I would not expect fireworks in that. And undoubtedly, kind of going back to what I said earlier about aerial tools, he's a physical presence. Mikel Arteta has installed height in this team. You need that in the Premier League. He stands at six foot two, I believe. And he, you know, he combines technical ability with physicality. And that's that's what you need in England or in the Premier League. And that thus makes him effective in both the attacking and defensive phases of play, or at least competent in such people. Plus, to be honest with you, and I'm asking you guys this listening, who would say no? to a player which is a formidable presence in midfield and would guard our midfield slash indirectly the defence like no other potentially. And I do think he's very difficult to be an intelligent footballer. Now, I don't agree with Rafa Benitez people in comparing him to Javi Alonso, but if anybody had more creditability in the comparisons, would it be someone that's worked with Javi Alonso, somebody that's won the things and done the things Rafa Benitez has done in the professional game or somebody speaking on YouTube? But the man himself said there are similarities I will tell you, though, it maybe sounds stupid, but they're both Basque, both from the Basque country, a bit like his namesake and fellow Spaniard, Mikel Arteta. They are similar because of the position they're in and the way they read the game. Alonso's long passing was better, but Moreno's is more mobile and more dynamic. Now, I'd rather him look like Javi Alonso. And as I said, I don't necessarily agree with Rafa Benitez's comments, but... That is something that provides food for thought, people. I guess, you know, while he's not a magician on the football, nor would I describe him as the most press-resistant midfielder like a Xavi Alonso, a Santi Cazola, or a Xavi, a Iniesta, a Luka Modric, he's a player who could help us Arsenal, as well as currently doing for Sociedad, progress the ball further up the pitch, break the lines, and actually counter-attack and explode on the counter-attacking transition. And also someone that is dynamic enough to, as soon as we lose the ball, help to, you know, do the counter and high press and receive the ball ball back very quickly you know obviously the nature of the game I do think his discipline's improved but he does win a lot of fouls he does create a lot of fouls and in the Premier League especially with Arsenal tax you would potentially pick up a number of bookings once again in short I think it'd be a competent member of the squad and not necessarily a game changer so I wouldn't be against it people if I'm honest with you with that being said I've offered my thoughts again it's an all-inclusive platform I appreciate you lot for tuning in I appreciate those who have smashed the like button but I need one more favour from you lot hit the subscribe button and let me know your thoughts on arsenal's transfer plans as well as the man moreno in question so yeah like comment and subscribe one love for tuning in check out the rest of the content and turn on your notifications on that note people deluded peace